Now, believe it or not, this is a 10-year-old EV. And according to some out there, it probably should have been on fire twice by now and had three or four different battery replacements. But it hasn't. Now, this was the first ever 911 I converted 10 years ago. And behind me over here is the very latest 911 we've converted. And a lot has happened in 10 years. And that is what this episode's all about. We're going to compare what evolution has happened in 10 years and compare that to this. Let's get into it. Now, this car I consider as ECC 001 car because although it wasn't the first car I ever converted to electric, it was a 1965 Red Beetle called Burt that I converted to electric before this one, but that was more of a project for me, just tinker time in the garage, never intended to sell it, but this was the first commission. A customer contacted me through social media and said, hey, love that Red Beetle you did, can you build me a 911? I thought, Okay then. So this, I think, is 001 ECC. And behind me over here is the very latest 911 we've converted. And that's going to be ECC 100 and something. And today's episode, we're going to do a technical deep, deep dive, if you like, into having a look at the technology underneath this 911 and comparing it to the very latest technology over there. As always with these episodes, we're going to start with the car because the car's the start at the end of the day. So this started life as a 1979 911 Targa SC. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, what engine was it? 3.2 litre, I think it was. Um, but stylistically, I decided with the customer to do some kind of customizations, I suppose you'd call it, backdates. So I'll take you through these first. So first of all, there was a little bit of a colour change. Um, we wanted modern LED headlights, so behind here are some LED headlights. Um, then braid wheels, because it def didn't have braid wheels on. I'll see if I can dig out an old photo of the car when it came in, because it had a massive huge whale tail on the back, which I really didn't like. Um, so I wanted to kind of make it look a little bit older than it was. So I wanted to put a lot of chrome trim on like the earlier cars so we put chrome trim everywhere chrome trim um on the targa uh, sorry on the targa on the um quarter lights uh, chrome mirror here uh, same with the handles something i really liked uh, i wanted to do was do a polished stainless steel targa bar so normally these are painted uh, either black um, are there any other colours? I think that's it. Um, so we did a stainless steel polish on this, which uh, not many people do. And again, chrome trim on the Targa window. So yes, 911 people out there, we did have to take the uh, glass out of the Targa. And yes, it was a, a pain in the you-know-where. So uh, we took that out. Um, actually, Tim, if you come around the back... And around the back here, for all you Porsche aficionados, you'll probably recognise most of the changes we've done compared to a 1969 SC because there's no whale tail here or actually, question to you guys out there, was there supposed to be a massive huge whale tail on the back of a 1979 SC? Because I don't think there's supposed to be, but anyway, it came with one. Got rid of that. Um, I, we put this uh, chrome grill on here and that's normally a black one looks slightly different to that. Uh, we put the 911E, obviously, for E for electric badge on there. And you notice we've also got rid of the red reflector that usually goes all the way along here and just put a, a body coloured one there and put the Porsche um, lettering off a. Do you know where that's from? 914. There you go. Did you spell it right this time? I did spell it right this time, yes. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, inside joke there. We might tell you that later. Uh, so we put the Porsche lettering uh, that's normally on the grill of a 9146 uh, on the back here. But externally, that's pretty much it. You've got the uh, period-looking Pirelli tyres on. So stylistically, that's the outside. Now, technology has really moved on in those 10 years, and that's what this episode is all about. Obviously, we wanted to see underneath the skin of these two cars, because fundamentally, from the outside, they're the same. It's a Porsche 911 electric, Porsche 911 electric. But in the 10 years between these two cars, a lot has changed underneath, and that is where we're going to start. Underneath the front here is the battery pack. So underneath the, not the engine bay, the front boot in a 911. 
we have half of the battery pack. Now this is a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack total and half of it is in the frontier. And as you can see, there is no boot space whatsoever. It's completely gone. Now, if we compare that to the 911 behind me, now in this car, we've got a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack percentage wise, that's what roughly 20% increase in energy density, let's say. Both cars weigh the same, by the way. Uh, so half of the battery pack is in the front, just like the other uh, Targa over there, and half is in the back. But if you notice, we've got some space in here now. Not a huge amount. Um, this car's not finished yet. There's some carpeting and everything uh, to go in here, but you know you can kind of see where the cables go. It's quite nice. You've got your high voltage cables here. But yeah, you, you can fit some, some luggage in here. So even though this is a bigger battery pack in this car and weighs the same, size-wise, it's a lot smaller. Right, rear battery pack now. So 10 years ago, battery module options were fair to say limited and we've put in Mercedes, um, no, they're actually Tesla batteries but they were uh, out of a Mercedes into this and the other half of the battery pack is in the rear here. So the, just where the back seats were we've made a, a, a substantial frame in there to hold that other half of the battery pack but it takes up the whole of the back seat area. Now our latest 911 as you can see we've managed to keep the back seats and that's because the energy density of the latest technology batteries and also the, the physical size is a lot smaller. So the battery pack now can fit in the back. So if Tim follows me around here, you can see there's the other half of the battery pack in the latest 911. So 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, 62 kilowatt hour battery pack fits in here. But there's one feature on that Targa that does beat this. I just want to show you that. So back to the Targa again. Because we got the battery pack in the back seat area, we were able to make the engine bay into a boot, which I thought was a really cool feature. Batteries are pretty useless things unless you can charge them up really. And it's that charging speed that's the massive leap forward, if you like, from 10 years ago to where we are now. So this Targa has a 100 volt nominal battery pack system in. And back then we had a five kilowatt charging speed. So if I lift up the lid here, oops. There we go. So there's a type two charger here, AC, and it's just five kilowatts, which is pretty slow, overnight charging only, if you like. Now, this also doesn't have battery coolant uh, running through it either. Now, the reasoning behind that is because there's not a huge amount of amps going in, charging it up really quickly, and not a really huge amount of amps coming out either, because the motor, which we'll come to later, isn't pulling a huge amount of amps. So there's no battery cooling on this, 100 volt nominal, and only five kilowatt charging. Behind me here, on the latest 911, it's 400 volt uh, on the battery pack. Does have thermal management obviously on the battery uh, pack as well because we're putting a huge amount of amps in very quickly when we charge up because it has CCS. And also, we'll come to the motor later, we can pull quite a bit of amps out as well. So on here, we have a 100 kilowatt CCS rapid charging and also seven kilowatt AC charging as well. Right, we covered batteries and we covered charging up but to deplete that battery, we need a motor and we need to make this car go. And we're back in the Targa here and you'll notice I've got gears because back then we were putting motors onto the original gearbox and that's what this one has here. So this has a, a dual AC 34 motor coupled to the gearbox at the back and that gave us around about 130 horsepower, which not a huge amount, but it was a nice amount um, for this car. And instrumentation wise, that meant we'd keep all the instrumentation the same. So we've got the speedo and all this. The only thing we've changed here is we've got one dial here, which is the state of charge gauge that shows us how much is left in the battery. But let's have a look around the back. Uh, hopefully Tim's knees aren't gonna crack too much because we're gonna look underneath at the motor now. Okay, so around the back here, we've got that dual AC34 motor coupled to the gearbox underneath there. You're going to be able to get down there and take a shot? It's unlikely, no, not with my, not with my age. Okay, so to save on Tim's knees, I'll take a photo and put it on the screen for you guys. But that is a dual AC34 motor from HPEVS. And what it is, it's two AC34 motors in line 
in one housing. And then via an adapter plate, a flywheel clutch, that attaches to the original Porsche 915 gearbox, it would have been in this era of 911. Uh, then to the, to the uh, wheels, a little bit of uh, parasitic loss, if you like, in the original gearbox, but that's the technology we had back then. And if you're wondering how does electric motor work with a gearbox, well, search out the previous episode we did on a lovely BMW 1602 because we went into some detail as to how it, or well, what it's like to drive an electric converted classic that's got an original gearbox. But that's where we were 10 years ago, and let's have a chat about where we are now. Now, 10 years later, and our latest. 911 here. This is using our bolt-in 911 conversion kit. Click on the link above if you want to see a, an episode all about that. And there are two motor options with our bolt-in kit. There is the standard, which is 260 horsepower, uh, and that's what's in this one. And that is a small Tesla drive unit, rear one. And if you are really brave and you've got some wider wings and some big rubber under there, you can put the large Tesla drive unit in, which we've done a number of those conversions, and that gives you over 500 horsepower. So this is a lot more powerful, even with the standard uh, drive unit in compared to the um, 10-year-old target uh, over there but also it's more efficient because this is a drive unit rather than the motor so that means it's direct drive it's got a, a very efficient motor going through um, a set of gears still and uh, to the wheels whereas that it's an AC motor two AC motors not as efficient so that means that it's not turning as much as the energy that it's given into motion uh, some of it's turned into heat if you like um, but also on the target you're going through that old gearbox which is a little bit of parasitic load again so this drive unit in here actually is more efficient than the one in the target and that more efficient drive unit out the back also then means, because it's direct drive, I've got no clutch here, I've got no gear stick or anything. So what we have is a center console here, I've got a wireless phone charger here, um, a drinks holder, reverse, neutral and forward. And also just notice there, we've also got the heated seat switches, which is a nice bit of luxury in this car as well. Instrumentation wise, we've got completely new dials in here, although they look uh, old school. They are um, uh, brand new EV centric dials. So we've got speed here. Uh, we've got an amps gauge there that obviously when you put your foot down goes that way and when it goes into regen it goes below the zero line. Uh, you've got battery state of charge here. So that's effectively your fuel gauge if you like. And then you've got other things like battery temperature, motor temperature um, and uh, other voltages. So we've got the 12 volt battery and stuff. So it's an EV centric um, instrumentation pack. The other thing I've just noticed here as well, we've got AC as well in this car. That's something we didn't have as an option 10 years ago. So now we have a 400 volt AC compressor um, in the in, inner wing over there. So we've got air conditioning as well. So that's another evolution that we've put on um, our latest EV conversions. I really wanted to take this out on the road and show you it on the road because it's a beautiful car on the road but today unfortunately we've got snow on the road and I really don't want to be taking this beautiful classic 911 out on salted horrible snowy roads out there but if you want to go and see a very similar car that we converted out on the roads in sunnier times click on the link above there's a Porsche 912 episode that we did with exactly the same drivetrain uh, battery pack motor etc so click on the link above if you want to see that so there we go that is a technical comparison if you like as to where we were 10 years ago and how technology has moved on to where we are today so car number one car number a hundred and something <laughs> there we go but you're probably wondering why this one's back in because after 10 years shouldn't it still be as reliable evs are supposed to be reliable maintenance free etc it's still a classic car so it's back in for some classic car TLC, the speedo uh, um, stopped working and uh, the uh, rear brake, uh, handbrake was sticking. Typical classic car stuff. So it's back in for a bit of TLC. I've just noticed there's an exhaust pipe on that. I, d I didn't put that on people. That's not me. <laughs> um, but 
yeah, I mean, it still drives fine. We've done a health check on the battery pack, um, uh, motor and everything. All is working perfectly on that. Um, oh, that's the other thing, door cards uh, needed to be replaced. The customer didn't like the styling of the door cards because I think we put on RS ones, which were a little bit, you know, racy, if you like. So door cards getting replaced on that. Um, but as far as where we are now with technology, we just recently com uh, completed a range test, and bear in mind it's winter at the moment, that's why Tim's got his ski jacket on behind the camera, and we've done a winter range test in this, and we've got 225 miles of range out of this, and you know, it's 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, quite an efficient motor, um, fairly skinny tyres, quite aerodynamic, um, it'll be more miles per kilowatt hour than that. I can't remember what the range is on that, I'm afraid it was 10 years ago now. So 225 mile range, but also because we've got the CCS rapid charging on, there's no reason why you can't use this like a modern EV and just drive it you know, down to Cornwall or wherever you want to drive it. That can be charged up in minutes rather than hours, uh, whereas that is an overnight charge. So, and I think that is the biggest game changer in our industry in the last 10 years. The fact that you can now use an electric classic car, like I do, as a daily driver to go anywhere you like, on holidays, down to Spain, whatever. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, where we are now with our latest technology. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.